<clears throat> Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be talking about tattooing darker toned skinned individuals. All right. Okay, now that that's over with, this is, um, I've been tattooing for 20 years and it's very rare that I've actually been able to find people who know how to tattoo darker tone skin. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about, you know, if, if skin has color, how you're supposed to approach design, how you're supposed to actually accomplish the tattoo, uh, even how you're just like supposed to stretch the skin to do a line. So what we figured that we would do is kind of a, a basic video here, give you some tips if you are a tattooer on how to approach darker skin individuals uh, to improve the quality of the tattoo, um, how to plan the tattoo. Uh, this is gonna be design stuff, how to accomplish it effectively, right? To decrease the chance of the scarring and longevity of the tattoo that will be increased. And then the aftercare basics with this, right? So, starting off, the planning. Planning. Let's keep a smile on this. Okay, so when we tattoo somebody who has lighter toned skin, there's less that is coming in between light, right? The pigment and your eyes. So there's usually three things that have to happen, right? First, we have to have a light source. We'll just say it's the sun, it's natural light, right? is gonna shine down to, you know, we'll just say this is tattoo, right? Light has to go through a person's skin to interact with the pigment that has been installed into the person's body. Uh, and then it has to come back through the skin out to meet our eyes, right? So it's a double duty that the skin is pulling when it's interacting with light, especially if you have darker toned skin, right? Melanin, this uh, stuff that's in your skin, let's write this down, melanin. <laughs> melanin is what gives your skin its color, right? The more melanin you have, the darker your skin tone is. And this is usually gonna be based on genetic uh, inherited traits, right? The closer to the equator that you are, we'll draw a little circle here, the closer to the equator that you are, the more UV light that you're gonna experience. Therefore, the darker your skin is gonna be, right? Because melanin is really good at absorbing light. Melanin absorbs light, and we should say light energy, right? Um, oh, geez, I almost spilled, spilled that. Um, it's great, right? That's That protects people from getting things like uh, cancer, skin cancer specifically, right? Because if it's absorbing the light, that light doesn't have a chance to go through the skin. We'll do our skin model here. Melanin is located at the bottom of the epidermis, right? And that's where skin tone is gonna be. If light is coming in from the sun, we'll do this again. It's gonna be absorbed before it can get down to the dermis, which holds like all of this stuff that, you know, is gonna like <laughs> vascularization, hair follicles, nerves, all those things that we don't want damaged, right? The epidermis is the protective layer on the outside of our skin, right? It's, it stops us from getting sick um, by stopping invasion of like foreign particles and stuff. Uh, there's, we don't have to get into acid metal and stuff like that right now, but um, it's amazing, right? But the more light energy that passes through the melanin, the more likely you are to end up with sunburns, right? And if you keep getting sunburned over time, that amount of damage just can result in cancers. So yeah, so the closer to the equator that you are, usually the more melanin you have because there's more sunlight there, right? So you're better at absorbing it. When you start getting further away from that, you know, towards the poles, you don't see, you know, genetically going back for people who have really dark skin. It's usually pretty light, right? Um, like my family is Norwegian and Irish. And you're gonna see them kind of up here if we're saying like North America is right here or whatever, right? Um, forget you, Central America. There we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, we love you. Um, so like my, my skin is very fair, right? I'm not prone to burning too much because I actually have um, some uh, Mediterranean Arabic blood. My family's black Irish. Um, so I tend to actually tan pretty dark, right? Um, but like my cousins who are like straight up 100% Norwegian, if they get in the sun, they just burn like all heck. Anyways, 
We're talking about darker tone skin with tattooing. Uh, <laughs> not more about white people. Um, so when we're gonna get into the planning, we have to think about a few things, right? So if the sun is being absorbed more effectively by the skin, that means that there's not gonna be as much light energy coming out to carry what is in the skin far enough to be picked up by the eyes, right? So what we have to do is a few things, right? First is depending on darkness, depending on tone, right? Make bigger. Um, what do we mean by this? Well, we're gonna make things bigger. The darker that someone's skin is, the larger the tattoo has to be so that it can be picked up at a distance. Or it has to just be more basic and bigger. Like if you get really, really dark skin, if I'm gonna take a small bit of lettering and try to put it onto someone, you know, like on their forearm or whatever, you're not gonna see it, right? So if I make that lettering this big, even if they're super dark, you'll be able to see it. You know, even if it's, you know, if you're up close, you'll be able like, hey, you maybe even across the street, you can see it, right? So size is gonna be a big thing, right? And then we're also gonna to have to think about placement, right? Placement is gonna be a big thing in this as well. Like normally if I have somebody who's like mid-tone to darker tone skin, I'm already gonna be making the design within reason about maybe 15% larger, uh, just to make sure that it's gonna be vivid, picked up enough. Unless the person's like, no, I want the super discreet, we wanna make it smaller, then we can do something with that, right? Um, but past the bigger stuff, we want the, the vibrant tattoo that can be seen. I'm gonna worry about the placement, right? Because there's certain parts of our body that are always gonna get more sun than not. We drive cars, that left arm, you always get that driver's tan, right? The back backside of our arm is lighter, right? So if we want to have something with more detail, we can think about those spots on the body that are not going to be coming in contact with the environment as much and plan the tattoos accordingly, especially in large scale designs, right? So that's kind of the big thing, right? Like thinking about the design, if we're doing something that has a lot of very fine line work that may work on a person with light tone skin, it may not work with somebody who has darker tones, right? So we might wanna make the lines bigger. We might make the design bigger. We might place it somewhere else to try and make sure that that design is gonna have the, like the, the gusto that we want it to have. It's lack of a word I had. Anyways, it's been a long day. I apologize, YouTube. <clears throat> um, the next bit that we're gonna be worrying about is the actual application, right? So the application is gonna be different. We'll do another smiley because just keep this somewhat consistent. I always do like, two, if I do three things, I'll do like two smileys and then I'll forget it on the last one. Maybe I'll get this one. Anyways, um, application, we have to know a few things. One, if the skin is really good at absorbing light energy, right? That means it can take time for us to see the lines, right? Uh, let's, yeah, let's do the eraser on the back here. Lines take time. Sometimes when you have somebody who has very dark skin, you can go to do a line and you won't see it. Now, you know that you have rationally tattooed someone, right? But tattooers, because we're so like, more, more often than not we tattoo light skinned people, at least in like the Western world. I mean, depending on your clientele, I mean, I, you know, anyways. If there isn't that direct, feedback where you get to see something and you're like, yeah, that looks good. Tattooers will start to panic. And so what they'll do is they run a line and they can't see it very well. So they'll go again and again and again and again and again, and they just chew up the skin, right? You can't do that. If you're going to be working on especially very dark toned skin, you want to make sure that when you commit that line, you know that you committed it. You believe in it. You understand what you have done and you're aware of it before you do it. Because you can go through and line the whole tattoo, give it a wipe and come back 10 minutes later. And then all of a sudden line work will appear right? You have to give the body time to decrease swelling, to like let go of some of that melanized tissue that's pushing in front of stuff to try and keep itself safe, right? To allow light in, to bounce off of what's in there, refract through it, to come out, meet you in the eyes, and then you can see it. Especially if they are very dark, redness, swelling, things like this can occlude the ability of you being able to see the pigment that's installed in the skin. So take time, do something, commit it, don't go over it a bunch, right? Just wait, it's not that hard. Um, past the application, we also have to worry about stretching, right? We have to stretch effectively. Um, this doesn't happen all the time, but in my experience, the majority of people who have darker toned skin tend to take better care of their skin, right? There is a, a factor called transepidermal water loss, which means the body is actually having to utilize more moisture inside by expelling it to keep the skin cool. And this is just an adaptation to, like if something is dark, right? If you're, 
if you're in the sun, you're collecting heat, right? But if your skin is darker, it's gonna actually heat up more. It's gonna attract more of that. That melanin that is in your skin, right, is going to like absorb more energy. That energy is gonna turn into heat and that has to be dispelled somehow, right? So if you're losing all of this moisture, your skin tends to get as like, what's known as ashy, right? So you tend to put moisturizer on it. You put moisturizer on it that helps better effectively dispel heat, which, you know, is like a good cycle. If you're doing that, because you have like medium tone to dark tone skin, your skin is gonna stretch differently, right? If you take somebody who takes care of their skin and like moisturizes it daily and exfoliates and it's just like a really great, healthy, amazing skin and you compare it to Gary the biker who's outside, never moisturizes, only drinks Diet Coke and like sits in the sun 27 hours, you know, out of the day, it's gonna be different how you can stretch their skin, right? One's a football and one is perfectly healthy skin. So when you go to stretch, you can't just bear down, right? You gotta be more gentle. This is also gonna go with your depth on your needle, right? If you don't have to go through as much dead, calcified skin that's living on the outside of Gary's arm, you don't have to work as hard, right? The epidermis on somebody who takes care of their skin is gonna be a lot thinner than a person who doesn't, right? Because there's gonna be a lot of extra dead skin on the top of this that's slowly sloughing off. Like me, being this white dude, I never moisturize my skin. It's just like Santa Claus walking through the frickin', you know. It's bad, so you got this stuff. You have to go further and deeper. You might have to like tailor your needle back a little bit and just gently glide into the skin and you'll still be able to see uh, that pigment show up, right? There's a few tips. Think about the depth. Stretch effectively. Only get enough so you're starting to feel some bounce back, right? Don't bear down and try to pull off on the skin. It's just not gonna work out very well. And make sure you wait on your lines uh, when you're doing them. Uh, final one's gonna be aftercare, and I'm gonna remember the smiley face. All right. So aftercare, if we're taking all this stuff into effect, when we're planning out the aftercare, and we should do aftercare holistically. We have a video about this, we wanna go find it. What we need to do is figure out if the person that we're tattooing already has a skincare routine, right? There's a few things that we're gonna know about this. The first is gonna be the microbiome. And I like to point this out to people when we're doing aftercare. There is stuff that exists on the outside of your skin. The skin is not like canvas nor like paper, right? It's just a bunch of cells. And on the outside of that, there is bacteria, viruses, mold, funguses, bugs, all this other stuff. They're very, 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 very tiny. That is your microbiome. Everything out there is constantly at war and certain things are gonna be killing other things and keeping other things in check that could keep us sick. But when you get a wound, those things that live on outside your skin can get in and make you ill, right? So when we're caring for something like a tattoo, which is an open wound, which opens you up to infection, the things that are living outside on your body, we don't want to mess with them too much because they're kind of in a good stasis, right? Homeostasis, specifically. <laughs> so if somebody already has a skincare routine where they're using a specific type of product on their skin, changing it can be negative. It can be deleterious towards the actual healing, right? Because you're gonna be influencing the things that live outside the body. So, very first thing we're gonna do after the tattoo is see if somebody has an aftercare routine. Darker tone skin people, in my experience, most often do. Um, so you wanna utilize that care routine or the products that they already have to make sure that you're not gonna be disturbing the microbiome, which is gonna decrease the chances of them picking up an infection, right? If somebody, you know, exfoliates every, you know, four days or maybe every seven days, you know, cut that out. Make sure we're not gonna exfoliate a wound, right? That's not smart. But if you're using something like a Lupiderm lotion or a cocoa or shea butter, right? Or coconut oil or something that's already built up in the body and the body understands and the microbiome has been affected by, we don't wanna change that product, right? <laughs> it's really, really simple. The next thing we're gonna do is make sure we use rational choices. Now, I know that this is difficult. Oh my God, I almost, I just multitasked. Fuck yeah. Um, rational choices is gonna be like with aftercare. If somebody's already taking care of their skin and let's say they're moisturizing twice a day with Lubriderm and Vaseline, you're not gonna tell them to put Aquaphor on their skin three times a day on top of that. That is horrible, right? Remember, aftercare does not heal the tattoo, your body does. Aftercare just makes the environment hospitable enough to heal more effectively. So, 
Rational choices. If somebody is already moisturizing their skin and it is healthy, how can they make it more healthy? They can't. You can make your skin unhealthy, right? <laughs> but you can't make it more healthy or else we would all try to be more healthy all the time. I mean, I know if you're unhealthy like me, you're trying to be more healthy, but if you're already healthy, you can't just get extra healthy. That doesn't work like that, right? So try to like ask the person that you're working with after this tattoo is done how they should take care of it, right? Let them be involved in that routine. If you ask them, okay, so if you have Aquaphor, I want you to put it on three times a day. Okay, wait, 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 wait. What if we take that Aquaphor and we put it on head to toe, all of our body, front, back, up, down, everything, three times a day for a month? What will our skin feel like? If the person is like, my skin would feel amazing. Cool, go and do it. If they're like a normal person, and you say you put off forehead to toe three times a day for a month, and they go, that would be disgusting and I'd feel horrible, why would you put that on a wound? Right? So rational choices. Think about that. How can you tailor it to fit the person, and how can you affect that microbiome effectively to decrease the chances of scarring? So that's it. It's our easiest A-B guide on how to effectively tattoo dark skin people. Um, and this is not comprehensive, but it's a good starting point, right? Just remember, every time that you're going to get into doing something, you should always make sure that the size and placement are going to be effective based on the skin tone of the individual, right? Take your time with the lines while you're stretching effectively and make sure that the depth of your needle is adjusted based on the health of the person's skin. This is regardless of skin tone, right? And aftercare as well, not even for darker skin people, right? We want to make sure that we're taking the microbiome and rational choices into play when we craft it for each person holistically. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> this is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com saying, I have no idea how I monologued that, editorialized, but whatever. Signing off.